Hello, everybody. Welcome to Talk About Houses. I'm Todd. I'm Juana. So I read a very interesting article. Um, it was not. It's not a brand new article, um, but it uh, was very interesting. Uh, it talks about home prices over the last 50 years, mm -hmm. and the headline of the article said, "Here's how much house housing prices have skyrocketed over the last 50 years." Interesting. I thought it was an interesting choice of uh, of terms for skyrocketing. So we're first we're going to go to the chart, and then we're going to talk about a bunch of quotes in here. Okay. Um, now this chart shows median home values in the U.S. between 1940 and 2000. Okay, so in 1940 the median home was uh, 2,900 dollars, 2,900 bucks I for a median house. That might be close to rent now. <laughs> you pay that in rent probably in a yeah. month, and that they pay that for an entire house. Yes. Uh, I remember somebody said that those little houses on, um, if you've ever been to Newport Beach. They have those little islands like Balboa Island and Lido Island, those little islands. They have these little bitty houses on them. That was military housing. It was government housing. Government built the houses. And at the end of the war, they let people buy them for $2,000 <laughs> cash. They, you had to pay for them. So you either had to get the money or you had to borrow the money. But if you had 2000 bucks, you could basically buy one of them. If you've ever looked, those houses are probably three or four million, and they're little bitty houses. Mm -hmm. But they're and they're on the island. You got to take the bridge. You got to hope the bridge, the little bridge, is open. You can't or take a ferry a ferry boat to them because you mm -hmm. can't just you know. And they're it's they're very small. It's like really little small houses on little lots on these islands. Okay, but um, and now they're a ton of money. So this shows the, how prices have changed. Of course, it only goes to two thousand. Of course, we know. Uh, the prices are up. So there's two reasons we want to do this. One is there's a bunch of quotes we're going to look at, right? And then the other thing is we want to go through these numbers. Inflation does play a part in this. Yes. But adjusted for inflation, if you took that 1940 number, it would be about 30000 <laughs> So think about that. $30,000 in today's money is would be uh, that you could buy a house for a year's income. So a year's income was probably 2,900 bucks. Mm -hmm. So in a year's income, you could have purchased a house in 1940. Uh, why didn't more people buy houses? Good question. Home ownership really didn't start to skyrocket until honestly the 70s and 80s when uh, even when interest rates were high, people just rather live it, buy a home. In cities, a lot of people didn't own homes, mm -hmm. but uh, home affordability has always been kind of a weird thing. But if you think home affordability is tough now, it's I mean, buying a house back in 1940 was, you know, relatively much easier to do, right? Right, right. You know, but part of it's just, I think, cultural too. Uh, you know, I think we've gotten in a culture where we're more interested in purchasing homes. And then, of course, the government got involved uh, by making, by giving people incentives to own a home, by um, putting in the home uh, interest mortgage deduction, by putting in deductions for your property taxes and that sort of thing. And all of that is designed to spur on uh, you know, individuals to purchase homes. This was the government's effort to support the housing market, support builders. It's the government kind of putting their thumb on the scale and supporting an industry. Yep. Um, what was interesting in this article is it had some quotes. It quoted this book, The Automatic Millionaire. Uh, the writer said, as a renter, you can easily spend half a million dollars or more on rent over the years. So if you spend 1500 bucks a month for on a month for rent for 30 years, it's 540 grand. Mm -hmm. And in the end, you wind up where you started, owning nothing, mm -hmm. okay? Or you can buy a house, spend the same amount, pay down the mortgage, and then you own the house free and clear. And it probably, the house is probably worth a lot more than 540 in 30, in 30 years from now. Right. Right? So, so what do you think, before we go to the next quote, because mm -hmm. the next quote's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. What do you think the, uh, like, why don't more people want to buy? So I don't know that it's not that more people don't want to buy. I think they're not at the at a point in their lives where they're ready to buy. I think home ownership is very deeply ingrained in the American culture. So I think a lot, of, I think most people would want to buy a house. I think people uh, who are not purchasing a home, they're not ready or uh, they are concerned about the responsibility of home ownership, meaning uh, they're concerned about what happens when uh, the air conditioner breaks or some something like that yep. happens. They're yep. concerned about uh, other repairs. They're concerned about maybe how long they'll be in the area and uh, maybe n not knowing you know what it takes to go ahead on the backside and sell the house. 
So it, part of it is lack of knowledge, part of it is the point in their lives, part of it is finances. So it's a lot of different things, but it, I think at the end of the day, home ownership is still part of the American dream. Buying a home is an escalator to wealth. Yes. An escalator. Mm -hmm. It is. You know, I think a lot of us uh, that uh, maybe started out purchasing homes uh, when we were young, uh, I think, you know, for, for my part, my goal was always to buy a house every five years, whether I kept the original house or not. Uh, my goal was to keep purchasing homes and kind of keep moving up. My goal was actually to buy a house every five years and rent the house that I moved out, out of so that I could amass a whole bunch of houses. I did not end up doing that, unfortunately. I wish I had, but that was certainly a goal that I had when I was a, a teenager. Um. There's another there, the other quote in here, and the guy's name is in here, David Bach. He wrote the wrote the book. Uh, However, if you can swing it, many experts still agree that buying a house is a good investment. Mm -hmm. Self-made millionaire David Bach says that not prioritizing home ownership is the single biggest mistake millennials are making. Mm -hmm. Now, right. remember, they're not all was like thirty-seven percent were buying houses or something, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Thirty-seven percent of young millennials are buying right. houses, buying houses. Right. So look, home ownership makes sense. It makes sense whether the market's going up or going down because we all have to live somewhere. So if you're going to be paying rent, then you may as well pay, you may as well make a mortgage payment. It's generally speaking, uh, either the same money or a lot of times it's actually less money in a mortgage payment than it is in rent. Do you have extra expenses if you're a homeowner? Well, of course you do. Uh, but those expenses over the length of your home ownership generally are not that great and they make sense versus your tax benefits versus your appreciation versus what it does to your life going forward and the opportunities that open up for you by being a homeowner. Warren Buffett once said that people want to get rich quick <laughs> but it's easy to get rich slow because someone asked him once how did you get to be so rich? And he pointed out that he didn't become a millionaire until he was like 28. Mm -hmm. And he didn't, he wasn't worth like 40 million or 50 million until he was like, you know, in his 40s. Mm -hmm. And he didn't become a billionaire until he was like in his 60s or 70s. Mm -hmm. And now he's, of course, worth probably $100 billion, right? Mm -hmm. Super rich. But he said, he says, you don't get rich. It's easy to get rich slow. Mm -hmm. It's easy to get rich slow. Right. And I mean, real estate is probably, you know, so here's another thing to think about if, cause a lot of people kind of don't comprehend. They're like, oh, it's a pyramid scheme or whatever. If, and that's fine. But here's a real thing, whether you, whatever you think that the end result of owning real estate is, if you pay $2,000 a month in rent and you pay $2,000 a month in mortgage, you, you may view that as $2,000 a month going out. But the truth is your mortgage payment is not all interest. Mm -hmm. It's let's say that when you first, the first time you make your mortgage payment, 1800 goes to pay interest and 200 pays principal reduction, mm -hmm. right? So that means that the next payment you make, it's $1,795 maybe is, you know, or mm -hmm. is, is, is and $205 is principal reduction. Mm -hmm. And every payment you make, you pay a little more of principal reduction. So after two months, you've made 400. And then after a year, you've made $2,400. Mm -hmm. you, that's equity. You paid that money to yourself because mm -hmm. you pay down the mortgage, but you, that, that money is um, principal reduction. You've reduced the principal amount of your loan. Mm -hmm. So some of it's service interest, but the rest is paying down the loan. Mm -hmm. And then you get to a point where you have all this equity in the house. Right. And two people who are, you know, and, and in theory, it, you know, if you could borrow the money, you would want to borrow every dollar you could get your hands on just buy houses with mm -hmm. it. And then use, let the tenants pay off your mortgage and you just could build wealth. That's really the, the, the one like leverage thing. The only thing that stops is if interest rates are, if it doesn't make sense interest rate wise to right. go do it, right? right? And if you have to put down payment money down. Um, Warren Buffett said in 2009 or 10, that if he could, he would write a check and buy 200, 200,000 homes in the U.S. He goes, if I could write, if I could buy, if I could write a check and buy 200,000 homes, I'd buy it. that right now is the single best investment I would make. And remember, this guy is basically the best like economic predictor of what's going on in mm -hmm. stock picker. Now, and it's not 2009, and you can't go buy a single family mm -hmm. home for 135 grand in Vegas, which was the bot, which you could buy at the bottom of the market. Mm -hmm. It's triple that <coughs> now, right? It is, it is triple that. But you know. 
there are still opportunities for you and if you're going to pay rent then look into maybe paying a mortgage payment instead of rent yeah so uh you know this is just something we wanted to share this with you because mm -hmm. you know there most of you re re like most of the people watch this i i we see the demographics because youtube tells us that mm -hmm. they're like 75 percent are male okay right so you're watching wanted <laughs> you're here for one and not for me but the the, the age range is like 30 to 50 predominantly that's okay. the age range so it's it's millennials and um uh gen x right, right? and we're, we're we're like old i'm an old gen x or i'm like right people older than me are are the boomers right so you're you're our peers kind of so most of you watch this of course some older people watching too but most of you're in that middle thing trying to figure out but you're at that point in your lives where you're probably into real estate right because you ask, see younger people don't watch the blog for the most part because they, they're not into real estate yet. They don't care about real estate, right? They're watching eSports, you know? Um, they're watching Dota, championships. They're not watching this. They're watching other stuff because they're not at a point where they really maybe have steady income. Because one of the things, if you don't have cash, you need steady income. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing, if you're part of the gig economy where you're just doing odd jobs for people, you know, you know, three months at a time, you may not have enough income to qualify for a loan. But if you're, Older, you know, and you had you're with a company and you're established. And you've been with a company for a while. Now you're you're qualified. You can go out and buy a house. Right. Right. And maybe later in the future, the loan companies will come up with a product for all of you who work these jobs where you get paid 10.99 income, and it's not. I mean, there are products out there, but it's way easier if you have mm -hmm. guaranteed income because the financial models are all built for. You know, you get hired by Eli Lilly, and you're a chemist. Right, and you live in you know Northwest Chicago suburb, right? And you're up there going, oh, I work for this company. I have a PhD in chemistry, and I work in a lab, and I make 120 thousand a year. And after two years, they're like, hey, well, here's some money. We we're a great credit risk. Why don't you go buy a house? You know, you can buy a seven hundred thousand dollar house. So like, oh shoot, I can live over there. These are pretty nice houses. I'll just buy one of these houses, right? Right. But if you're if you're not that person, you know, you probably it's harder to buy a house. It is, but you know, there are good products out there for people who. I uh, have are part of the gig economy. So if you are one of those who is interested in participating in the housing market, you know, find find a product that fits your lifestyle, and fits your in, you know the way you earn your income, and and you can you can participate in the housing uh, housing economy too. You know, we honestly believe that if you have a choice between paying rent and paying a mortgage, uh, generally speaking, you're better off paying a mortgage because part of that money is paying yourself. And one of the things uh, that you know most um, self-help books will tell you is always pay yourself first. So that goes to, to that point. You are paying yourself first when you're paying your housing bill, and part of that money is your equity. And, and the, the, the reference to paying yourself first is basically savings and investments. Right. I mean, it, it, it's make that a priority. Mm -hmm. Like if you had zero dollars, if you if you if everything you, if you look at your, your balance sheet for your household, your income statement, and it was at zero at the end of the month, you basically ran through all your cash. What it's saying is, go find some people you're paying and stop paying them. So right. cancel Netflix, <laughs> cancel Disney Plus, right? There's 40 bucks a month. Put the, go open a Roth IRA and put that money, 40 bucks a month, put it in there. And you yeah. go, but oh, I'm 22, I don't really need to invest in the future. No, like literally now is when you should be investing for the future. Yeah. Because that money is gonna appreciate like you know that the the the, the, the pre we should do a video on this but if you put a thousand bucks a year into a retirement plan mm -hmm. for seven years straight mm -hmm. and then never put any money into it ever again mm -hmm. and then your twin brother or sister when you stop contributing mm -hmm. on year eight they start putting a thousand bucks in and they put a thousand bucks a year in until they die they will never catch up to you so i have a story for you okay um, so I know somebody who uh, started putting, opened up a Roth IRA when he was uh, 18. 18. And he put in his $6,000 because that was basically everything he made. Okay. So he put in his $6,000 and mm -hmm. he did the same thing when he was 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. He is now 25 and he has over $70,000 in his Roth IRA. And remember, he's only been putting in $6,000 a year for 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. So in seven years, uh, you know, his 6,000 a, a year 
mature to over seventy thousand dollars, and you're thinking, well, you know, but no, because that you added twenty three and twenty four. Right. Oh, that's age twenty three, not twenty twenty three. No, no. Oh, okay. No. So, so, so over seven years, he put in seven times six. Yeah. Okay. So at this. Oh, forty two. You wanted me to right. give you the number. Yeah. Yes. Forty two. <laughs> Sorry. Look. Okay, who out there knows the significance of 42? Put it down in the comments, because he does not know the significance of 42. Um, <laughs> and anyway, so at this point, so he's in, into it for 42,000, he's got over 70,000, and he's only, he just turned 25. Okay, but this is a Roth. This is, well, right, so this is a Roth. So this is all growing uh, tax-free, because remember, he, was, he, he wasn't making very much money, so it made a lot of sense for him to, to use a Roth. He didn't need the tax break. Because he, he made no money. So it's not like he, he was going to have a tax deduction, right? So here's the thing. When this 25-year-old person turns 59 and a half, mm -hmm. and let's say there's $2 million in there, right? which is possible. It's right? very possible. He's very got possible. Over, over 70 right now. Okay. Um, and he makes a withdrawal and pays no taxes on it. That's right. He can literally just take the whole thing out. That's right. And use it to buy a house or do whatever. Yep. But exactly. it's completely 100% tax-free because it's in a Roth. Right. And, you know, you can't get that, that, that time back. Right. That, that's the thing. I, yeah. and, and I know that most of you are over 18, so please don't think that that ship has sailed. You know, it's never too late to get started. But I'm just making a point about this young person that, that did this, and this is where he is today. And, you know, he will probably get to retire earlier than his peers because of what he did when he was really young and didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> yeah, and plus he wasn't out there buying PlayStations and a wasting money on a bunch of stupid stuff. Right. You know, buying expensive car or whatever. Right. Right. So just something to think about. Okay, so we're obviously bullish on real estate. We're bullish on saving and investing. Mm -hmm. um, we do not believe you can get rich quick. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of time to, to generate wealth. The best investments, in my opinion, are money where or investments where you put your money away and they sit there for a long time. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're not making crypto videos. I have friends <laughs> who make crypto videos. We don't make crypto videos. Um, a lot of friends into crypto right now. That's like the big, in NFTs, right? But we are not interested in crypto or NFTs. Not what? saying they're bad investments, we're just not. So it's less that we're not interested and more that that's not our area of expertise. We talk about the things that we do know. We don't talk about the things that we don't know. Right. And, you know, but we do understand having experienced life, you know, to the extent that we have already and to, to see what, you know, if, like what things we could do if we go back and obviously buying, you know, in, in, in angel investing in Uber <laughs> and mining Bitcoin in 2009 would have been two of them. Also probably buying Amazon in 97, I think, or when it go public, 97, didn't it? You know, Amazon, Apple. It was a buck. Microsoft, any of those in '97, they, you know, some, Apple in 1980, yes, Microsoft in '86, <laughs> all these companies went public, right? I'll take them in 2000. How's that? I'll take them yeah. in 2000. I've Even, got no problem with yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So obviously, those would have been substantial. You know, yes. eighty thousand x, mm -hmm. like eight, you know, eighty thousand x, like huge investment multiples on those. Right. But you know, um, if you're chasing that, good luck. But you know, we like real estate. Yes. We think real estate's a great investment. Collecting rent is a great thing. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> and um, owning real estate, it just it just seems to always appreciate. And you mm -hmm. can always, it's not liquid though, right? No. You can borrow against it, but it's not liquid. You can't just go, hey, I'll just, whatever. Well, but you know, the thing is it's a large, it's a large investment. Uh, it's a lot of money in there. So the idea that you would require uh, to break into that piggy bank is very unlikely that there's something dramatic that happens in your life. And if that's the case, then your then dramatic occurrences require dramatic responses and selling a piece of property would be a dramatic response to something significant that happens in your life. But, uh, you know, for other things, there are savings, there are other ways to access cash relatively quickly. Uh, but just not a large sum of money like that. Leave a, uh, in the comments if if you want to share like how has saving and or investing changed your life? Mm -hmm. Like how is it, did you get to leave work? Do you, did you get to stop working early? Or do you have a plan to do something later in life that's gonna require, you know, do you wanna go on a rocket ship to Mars or fly into space or, and how are you gonna be able to do that now that you either opened an IRA or you bought a bunch of real estate? Mm -hmm. um, I actually, it's a funny story, I talked to an agent he, he applied to join Referral Cloud. Mm -hmm. So if you guys don't know, we have this startup called Referral Cloud. It's just, it's it's an engine for 
uh, agents to transact their referrals to each other. It's an agent, agent, real estate agent search engine. It's called Referral Cloud. And I, this agent joined the network. He wanted to join the network, but he doesn't actually sell real estate. Mm -hmm. He just wanted a place to put his referrals in so he could get paid when they close. Mm -hmm. So he just wants to put the referrals in the system. We assign them to an agent in another market. And then when they close, he gets paid a referral fee for, mm -hmm. for that. And I go, oh, so you're not doing real estate? He goes, no. He goes, like, I own like 70 houses. <laughs> And I go, you own, he owes 70, 70 unit, rental units. I have 70 rental units. I'm like, 70? That's like crazy. They're all manufactured. They're all, they're he, mobile homes. Yeah. He says, that's my niche. I only, they're cheap. I can get them easy. Um, you know, it's all cash. I collect cash. But that was the funny thing is he's got like a ton of mobile homes. Mm -hmm. He invests in mobile homes. Yep. Rent, mobile home rentals. That's his, that's the thing he does. Wherever he is, he's like the, mobile home guy he goes out and he hunts down these mobile home deals and he goes and grabs them and yeah and he's collecting a ton of money in rent it's it's what he makes his living mm -hmm. collecting rent on mobile homes he just picked a niche it's a it's a great niche yeah so it's a great niche so if you like the video please uh, hit the notification bell subscribe hit the like button share the video uh, leave us your comments we do love to interact with you guys so please give, give us an opportunity to interact with you share share your stories with us and we'll see you on the next video bye bye